Hi, this is Steve from Pixelbump.com. Welcome to our new tutorial on advanced color correction using After Effects. In our After Effects bootcamp or in some of our other videos, you've seen me kind of go through a few setups for color correction. And most of the time when you're working, you develop different methodologies as you go. And mine has kind of changed. And I wanted something that was gonna give me a little more flexibility because I've started noticing that if I just come in and just add a curves adjustment to something, it's harder for me to fine tune something like this image where we've got some really dark areas and we've got some really bright areas and I wanna kind of get it to balance out a bit more. And you can kind of come in and get something out of it and you can get good results. It's just, it's a little time consuming it's a little difficult to control, and especially on the curves, know exactly what area of the image you're affecting as you hit the curve and how much the fall off is gonna affect the in-between areas. So I don't really enjoy this kind of color correction overall. Um, for me, the curves are great for coming in and kind of over the course of the image, pulling out a little bit of a color or maybe giving the whole image a bit of a lift. And that's where I think curves is really good. But I've noticed, especially for something like this, I wanna be able to color correct the shadows and the highlights separately. And I don't wanna to have to go to speed grade to do it. So let me show you this new setup that I've been working with. And what I do is I come in and duplicate my footage layer and I grab myself a hue saturation. And I'll come in and just desaturate that out. And then I'll grab a levels and I'll drop that onto it. And then I'm gonna come in with my levels and just kind of shape the image a little bit. I want a little bit more contrast between the bright and the dark areas. And there we go, something about like that will probably work pretty well. And now I can go ahead and duplicate that layer. So it has the exact same effect set up on each of those two layers. Then I'll come in, create an adjustment layer for the shadows, and I'll create a second adjustment layer for the highlights. There we go. And let me just drop those guys in. And we'll put the highlights under one of the footage layers and the shadows under the other. And then I'll change the highlights track mat to Luma mat and the shadows track mat to Luma inverted mat. And now that everything's in, the image looks just as it did before, nothing's changed. But what it gives me the ability to do is drop levels on each of these two adjustment layers, the highlight and the shadows. And now if I come in, I can go into my highlights and start correcting that independently of the shadow areas. And I can come into the shadow area and start correcting that independently of my highlights. It just gives me a greater level of control of how I wanna correct that image. Then I can come into something like the red channel, boost that up a bit, maybe put a little more green in there, get this a little warmer looking. And then the shadows of the blue, maybe I'll come in and bring that up a bit maybe add a little green to that and there we go now we have a much more balanced and interesting looking image if i come over and solo back and forth you'll see that this is just much more appealing and then what i've normally been doing coming in and adding a solid and i'll name that the vignette and we'll take a ellipse and drop it on and I will subtract and feather it. And then I'll bring it down in opacity a little, just give myself a little focus area here. And then I can also come in, create one more adjustment layer and I'll label that the blur. And I will take another ellipse, change it to subtract, feather it out a bit and I'll drop on a fast blur and I'll click repeat edge pixels and maybe about 10 pixels of blur and there we go so this is a pretty flexible setup I can come back and change the 
amount of vignette, I can come over here, change the amount of blur, or maybe bring in the expansion on my mask to bring the blur in a little closer. I can come back to my highlights and work with those a little more, or maybe come back down to my shadows and play with that a little bit. And overall, this is not a bad setup, but you can already see that I'm having to jump between all these different layers to get to all the different controls and they're not in the same place. So it's not the greatest way to work. So what I did was I wrote a script to fix all of it and I'm gonna let you guys have it as well. So you can get this script over at pixelbump.com. It's over in our free stuff section and you download our new PB color correction script. And when you download it, you'll bring it here to your desktop or wherever you wanna put it and extract it. And you're gonna get two files in here. You're gonna get the PB color correct UI installer and the PB color correction script. Now, to get this guy up and running, what you do is you come over to your scripts panel, you run a script file, and you're gonna to want to go to wherever you've extracted your files. For me, it's the desktop. And I'm gonna install the PB Color Correct UI installer. And if you already have it installed, it gives you a message saying you've already installed this, just as I have, or you will get a message saying that the script is now installed. Once that is installed, you can go ahead and close After Effects, and then take your color correction script and drop that into your scripts folder inside After Effects. And so I'll open up my scripts folder. I will bring over the PB color correction script, drop it in. And again, it's telling me I already have it installed, but I'll just go ahead and install it again. Say move and replace. I can close those guys down. And at this point, you can restart After Effects. So let's go ahead and reopen the same file. We'll see we still have our color correction we set up manually. But now we can come over here, select the footage we want to color correct, go to File, Scripts, and run the PB Color Correction script. And it's going to add a whole bunch of stuff. Pretty much all those layers that you saw us add before manually, we've already added. Plus, we've got a really nifty control setup here that makes it really easy to get to all the controls in one area. So the first thing we need to do is knock out those levels. So I'll go ahead and click Show Selection here at the top. And that's gonna show me what my black and white image is looking like. So if I bring my white levels down and I can bring my black level up and I can change my offset here, get a nice image going. Pull the black down a little bit. There we go, something like that. And then I can go ahead, turn off the show selection. And just as before, nothing has changed yet because now we can start going into our highlights and our shadows and start really addressing this image. So the first thing I wanna do is bring up those shadows a bit. Maybe bring up a little bit of my highlights, just get a little nicer contrast here. And then maybe I'll bring a little more blue into the image and just kind of pick up those drapes in the shirt a little bit. Maybe I'll go ahead and pull out a little bit of the red as well. And in the shadows, I'll bring up the blue and the green maybe. And maybe let's crunch that back down a little bit. Now that it's got some color, it's got its own pop. We don't need it to be quite so bright. And there we go, in just a couple of clicks, we've already color corrected the image and balanced it much nicer than it was before. So there's our before and our after. And we can go ahead and bring a vignette in. So we'll just turn that on. Vignette's already been added and I can bring it in closer if I like. I can really play with how much I wanna see or how much that feathering is. So I can feather it all the way out or bring it all the way down. So there we go, we got a little more visual interest here in the center, and I can do the same with my blur. So I'll just turn on a little bit of blur, 
and let's bring in that mass expansion a little bit. There we go. So now we've gotten to pretty much the exact same place we'd gotten to here, but we did it in seconds rather than minutes. And for me, that is a huge win. I don't ever want to waste time setting up something when I just want to go in and get the job done. So this is really just a nice little tool that has improved my life and will hopefully improve yours as well. So let's take a look at another image. We'll grab something like this that has a lot less contrast in it. And let's see how the script is going to handle that. So we'll go ahead, run the color correction script. We'll go down to the selection and show it. And let's go ahead and bring up our whites just a touch. Get the black level going a little bit there. Something just a little more contrast in it. So that we'll have some differences that we can work with. So we'll go ahead and turn off the show selection. And let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So we can go ahead and bring down our highlights, maybe even bring down those shadows a little bit. So we find something that looks a little more rich. Let's go ahead and pull some of those reds out of the faces and maybe bring in a little blue into the shadows. And we've already got, again, a much more interesting image to work with. But we can still come down to our special effects. Let's go ahead and add a vignette. But in this case, I think black isn't quite right. Let's throw in a white one. and turn it down a little bit and let's go ahead and have a heavier blur and bring that in a little bit and again with just a few little changes we've made a much more interesting image than our original this is a really nice and powerful script that's going to help you achieve looks faster than ever and let's go ahead and take a look at one more here just for fun because let's do something that's outside as well and I'll go ahead, run the color correction script, and we'll go ahead and take a look at our levels. And there's not a lot we can really brighten out of this one because it's already so heavily clipped, but we can do our best. So we'll go ahead and kind of just get a little more contrast in there. And now we can come in and start maybe putting in a little more red a little more green, maybe a little more here in the shadows as well, and maybe bring those shadows down. Let's go ahead and bring those reds and greens up here. We're starting to get a warmer, more outdoors looking image than what we had before. We had a lot of blue here, now it's a lot warmer. Maybe it feels like a hot day now. But what is also fun, if I go ahead and hit reset, I can come in, let's go ahead and reset our levels once more. Something like that should work. If I come in and kind of pull out a lot of the color in the shadows, I start graying up the image. And if I come back and kind of brighten up the contrast, push my highlights brighter and keep those shadows darker, I start to get more of a bleach bypass kind of a look, which is also something really fun to add into your image. And I can come down here and add maybe just a little bit of vignetting around the edges. And there we go. Again, the before and the after, and it was just a couple little sliders here and there. We got to an interesting place and a better look for the image. And you can still use this in conjunction with any other color correction effect. So if I come in here and I create a new adjustment layer, I can still come in, add another hue saturation onto it. I can maybe either pull out a little more of that color, kind of amplify that the bleach bypass look, or I can come in, grab a curves, and again, do a gentle overall grade of adding maybe a little more green to it and maybe a little more blue. There we go. We've gotten three really unique looks, really fast, really easy, 
and the script. Hopefully you'll find it as fun and easy to use as I do. I think we've got a dog snoring. <laughs> anyway, I think we're here at the end of the tutorial. I hope you've learned something you can use in your work, and I hope you enjoy using this new script. Again, you can download it at pixelbump.com in our free stuff section right now. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up on Twitter or Facebook or in Google Plus or down in the comments. And if you want to keep learning, we have more great tutorials for you to use and other great assets for you to use in your work over at pixelbump.com. Thank you so much for watching. Go and create.